Um, this is the first time that you've spoken out since this news surfaced. Mm. Tell us what you think about her stepping down and also did anyone in the NAACP say to Rachel Dolezal, you know what, this is, this is a distraction. Maybe this is what you need to do. Well, w the NAACP is focused on our mission and our work. Uh, that's at the heart of what we do. And so uh, our members who looked up to her, appreciated her leadership, are uh, pained, uh, very disappointed, very disappointed. Uh, mainly because this is a distraction from the work. On the very day that we announced a major initiative called America's Journey for Justice, uh, we have uh, this, this resignation. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, it's about the work, uh, and that's what people are focusing on. But is there pain, and is there a need for healing? Most definitely so. And I certainly want to ask you about the march in just a moment. But I wonder, you know, as you pointed out in the break, you said there are many people who work uh, for the NAACP who are not black. And so I think some people have questioned, could she, and I wonder, as a white woman who had four adopted brothers and sisters who were black, that she could be someone in sort of a unique position to provide a bridge between mm -hmm. communities. Do you think she would have been more beneficial to the organization and the cause of your organization if she'd instead taken that route? Well, Brianna, here's the, uh, here's the thing that's uh, it's, uh, it's amazing about the history of the NAACP. Um, race is not a, a qualifying or disqualifying characteristic of leadership. So from the very beginning, we've had white branch presidents, Latino branch presidents, Native American branch presidents, as well as African American branch presidents. And so, and, and national, we've had national presidents, uh, or a national president, who had uh, white skin, blue eyes, and red hair, red hair namely Walter White. So uh, her background uh, is not an, an asset, or is it a liability? At the end of the day, what matters most to us is our credibility, our integrity. People have, have died, uh, have bled uh, for the work of the NAACP, and those, those letters mean something. And so to have anything that detracts from that or that impugns our integrity uh, is painful, and for many of us, uh, offensive as well. So you are here in Washington, D.C. today. I want to note you're announcing, as you mentioned, America's Journey for Justice. It's an 860-mile march, and it goes all the way from Selma, Alabama, to Washington, D.C. That is quite an undertaking. It is. It's been a huge year. There have been so many controversies. The topic of race has just exploded. What are you hoping that this achieves? Well, this historic march from uh, Alabama across Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, into Virginia, and the District of Columbia, is a march focused on our lives, our votes, our jobs, and our schools matter. What we're trying to do here is push for a set of concrete proposals fixing the Voting Rights Act, addressing and stopping racial profiling, energizing people all across uh, the South and around the country to bring about positive reform. And so the point being here, this is not merely a march. It's a public education campaign disguised as a march. We're trying to really reform the agenda of the country, starting in August, going 40 days, 40 nights, uh, and ending in Washington, and going door to door by the thousands, uh, bringing about our reform agenda. This is what you want to talk about. Rachel Dolezal has stepped aside, uh, stepped down, but at the same time, people are focused on her. Do you think if she apologized, it would turn the focus more to what the NAACP wants, wants to be talking about? I, I, th I think an acknowledgement of the pain, uh, the, the real sense of wounding that people feel. Um, let me put it this way. All across this country, there are people who have NAACP membership cards. And those cards are like passports to, democ to democracy. And so to have anything impugn our integrity is offensive. So some acknowledgement of that pain, some acknowledgement of, uh, of what we've gone through could be healing, would be healing. Would be healing. Uh there, this does seem like a lot of drama has come up around this episode, but there's also been this debate that's, I think a lot of people are interested in, this idea of being transracial. Maybe you are one race, but you identify with another one. What do you think about that conversation? Well, what I would say here is, when you look at this country, 
and look at the ways in which we all borrow from one another's uh, cultures and ethnicities. There's no need to lie. There's no need to misrepresent. When you look at the wellspring of history in the end of LACP, it is beautiful. It is as beautiful as the tapestry of the country. And so in terms of being transracial, uh, I'm not entirely sure what that means, but what I do uh, know is that the NAACP has stood for a country that is racism-free, such that we're able to partake of one another's uh, histories and culture uh, and, and ethnicities in an authentic and honest and integrity-driven way.